Da vam kažem, trener Đokovićev je jednom prilikom rekao da naš božanstveni prvi svetski teniser ne dobija adekvatan publicitet u svetu. To je on izgovorio. Međutim, šta o tome stvarno misle dva ugledna novinara u svetu koja prate tenis, čućete, njihova ime ne prepoznajete, među njima je čak i Vilander, šta oni kažu zbog čega po njihovom mišljenju Đoković ne dobija ono što treba da dobije? Da i čujemo. Novak's biggest problem to be summed up in two words, Federer and Nadal. Both of those guys have wonderful images, squeaky clean images, and, you know, look, Novak came into this as the third wheel. You know, he was, he, he's the guy who interrupted the greatest rivalry of all time, which, thankfully for tennis, was kind of falling apart at that point because Nadal was starting to dominate. But, you know, the average fan doesn't know this. The average fan just knows that Roger Federer is famous, you know. Rafael Nadal is famous, Rafa and Roger, and these guys are, you know, the names are easy to pronounce, unlike Djokovic, DJ, all the vowels. Well, I think that, first of all, he's up against the two most popular tennis players, maybe of all time, globally. Certainly Federer is the pop most popular. Um, I think Rafael Nadal is right there as well because of the great matches they have had, because of um, all the adversity that Nadal has gone through, always behaving the same way. And I think with Novak, we've seen it. We've seen a uh, transformation from a, from a very young player who won Australian Open at a very young age, and his his uh, court uh, demeanor wasn't as professional as it is now, and it wasn't as professional. We didn't see that change with Nadal and Federer because they were pretty much the same all the time. I don't think it's an anti-Djokovic sentiment. I don't think that people actively dislike Djokovic. What they do is they like the other guy. And when the other guy is Federer or, or Nadal, or an American player, of course, you know, or, or, or someone else, I mean, I think his problem is compounded. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's difficult for him. And look, you know, let's face it, he comes from, from, from Serbia. And he's got a funny sounding name to an English audience. We're not the most sophisticated people in the US. I don't think that players really are out looking for a credit they deserve. You know, I never felt like I played for the credit I deserve. I don't care what people think. You go out and you play tennis and you try to win the matches. And I would think Novak is too professional to um, to make that any, you know, and, and there's no big deal. In fact, it can help because you want to prove people even more. You know, Novak wants to be loved. Novak is a people guy. In some, in an odd way, I think some of these ups and downs are the fact that there is really are two Novaks. There's a Novak who just wants to be a regular guy and a good guy and a fun guy and get along with everybody. And there's the other Novak who wants to win big. The guys who win big, like Bjorn Borg, you know, Jimmy Connors, you know, John McEnroe, they didn't care about the public so much. They might have been popular. They might have been. They certainly were famous. They were. They, they were loved and hated. But you know, they're not like Djokovic. Djokovic actually really wanted to connect with. But I think if he gets the numbers up. He's only at eight, Nadal is at 14, and Federer is at 17. So he's got a long way to go. And before he gets up to their numbers, he's not going to be um, he's not going to be mentioned in the same sentence as Federer and Nadal. It's all about the Grand Slams, and of course, how many times he's been number one in the world. And there, he's doing great. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Hvala. Sve najbolje, prijatno.